coming with something a little bit different today, but it's still on the topic of medicine. Today I'm doing a video uh, about a day in the life of an intercalating BSc student. In this video, I'm going to be doing a bit of talking and I'm also going to post some extracts from uh, the lab and uh, from taking it from lectures, etc, 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 so that you can also see what it's like and it's not just me talking about it the whole time, right? Awesome. Um, for those of you that don't know me, I'm a fourth year medical student at Imperial College, London. Imperial College's um, medicine course is a six year course, so you have a five year traditional MBBS course and then we have an extra year um, where we get to intercalate, uh, so we take an extra year out to do an additional degree, so we get two degrees when we graduate hence the MBBS BSc. So at Imperial, we do the intercalated uh, BSc year, the fourth year, which is the year that I am in now. So you get um, a range of choices of BSCs that you can do. You can also leave Imperial to um, apply elsewhere to do an external BSc, which people have also taken um, up that option as well. And Imperial will allow anybody that wants to leave to go and study a different BSc elsewhere, as long as they apply. Um, uh, by the deadline and get admission basically. Yeah. So at Imperial everybody gets to study a BSc or like um, at other universities. Mm. The options range from anaesthetics and surgery to cardiology to remote medicine where, where you learn about providing medical care in really remote areas. So which BSc do I do? I am studying the reproductive and developmental sciences BSc so which is everything about uh, the female re reproductive system, pregnancy, labor, and uh, the associated comorbidities, etc, 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 etc. I chose to do that BSc because um, if you've seen some of my other videos, you, you, you would have noticed that I would have talked about my um, interest in obstetrics and gynecology that I've had since before starting medical school. So. I just wanted to kind of learn a bit more about ONG um, before we formally actually went to study it in um, fifth year. You know, we also get to do a research project as well as part of our BSc. So well, there's there's no area that currently interests me more than obstetrics and gynecology. So it would be really cool to and interesting to do a research project in that area what is the level of teaching like literally we, we begin by learning a lot of microscopic details and then we come to the microscopic the things that you can see feel touch here so if i give you a brief overview of what the intercalated year is like so first term uh, which goes from september to december is a lot of lectures so the course has changed so there are less lectures than there were in previous years and then we also have something called team-based learning which basically involves us doing quizzes which helps us to consolidate our learning basically uh, so that's first term and then um, alongside the lectures we have coursework that we have to hand in as well and that ranges uh, the, the coursework um, all throughout the term basically are to build our scientific skills so they're moving away from uh, the years of um, memorize and regurgitate to write an abstract, write a scientific report, write something that will be relevant for you as a doctor in the future basically, which is amazing. Thank you, Imperial, for doing this. Um, because like who's gonna teach you how to write an abstract or write a, a, a scientific paper? Do you understand? So we, you have to learn it from somewhere and this course, the, this new course structure really Help to hone their skills. Uh, second term is one month long. It consists of group work, so we have to do a group task. I won't say what the task is because it might change from year to year. And so you organize your time based on your group. So that there are no real contact hours. It's just whatever you and your group decide. And third term is a term I'm in now, um, and it's where we do our projects. So you are given a choice of projects, um, 20 something projects to choose from. Some are clinical projects, some are lab projects. So clinical projects, more to do with hospital patients. And lab projects, you're in a lab um, analyzing samples, 
which are also from patients yeah. so they, they all have like a clinical background really? i'm doing a lab based project right now so i'm about to insert some videos to give you a tour around the lab to show you some of the machines that um, I, I get to use for my projects and maybe a few of my colleagues with their consent as well maybe doing the Eliza's and some cool stuff right all right so my day starts with a commute i'm not going to tell you how long having lived closer and further from me um, i've just realized that you can't really adapt no matter where you live ish anyway so beautiful day um, which is very rare in london got my morning caffeine in hand so now i'm just arriving at the lab now and this is the standard lab desktop inside the lab as you can see there's multiple shelves multiple equipment on the table um, you can see the centrifuges here the vortexes used to mix solutions you can see solutions pipettes etc on the shelves um, enough for researchers to use and to do their work so you can see the pipettes on the table there distilled water etc this is an ice machine in the lab i believe every lab has one of these because ice is a very important part to experiments they use it to thaw samples etc 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 okay guys so here you can see me getting this machine ready to run samples for the day you can probably also see how crumpled up my lab coat is but don't watch that i really want to bring an iron in to iron out that lab coat but the iron is too heavy unfortunately so as you can see i'm using my measuring cylinder so you have to measure everything to the t here i'm just replacing the solutions that the machine needs and here i'm about to create a bubble bath as you see in a moment very cool now i'm joking i'm just emptying out all reagents from the machine here i'm preparing samples ready to put in the machine so the machine is going to detect um, the level of biomarkers in the samples so here the machine is up and running as you can see very fancy stuff it detects the level of certain different biomarkers in the samples that we have place it in the machine using an ELISA technology using a sandwich amino assay and or a competitive amino assay and we get to visualize the results of all of that and all the tests on the screen here most students find that if they go to the lab it will be a very early start maybe from like 8 30 or 9 and then it will be a late finish so like 5 30 once, uh, once you're running experiments you find that there's a lot of breaks in between so you're sitting down allowing the machine to run the samples or allowing whatever else to happen do you understand so there's a lot of waiting around that's why it also takes so long so here you can see my colleague conducting an ELISA preparing her solutions into the ELISA plates and here after a lot of time she's washing her plates with distilled water and I can also be seen here washing my Eliza place with distilled water using a multi-channel pipette. Uh, aside from the time that we spent in the lab actually processing our samples and kind of collecting results, we have to do a lot of background reading to actually write the scientific report on its own. So what the time we spent in the labs, which is about, we're given 12 weeks really um, to spend in the labs to learn lab methods, collect results. And then, uh, Outside of that, we have to be writing up a report, increasing our understanding on what it is that we're actually doing. The project is obviously worth the greatest chunk of our mark um, in the year. So in the intercalated BSc now at Imperial, um, all but two of them don't have exams anymore. So, what is social life like um, in fourth year BSc? I feel like in BSc year, we have more time on our hands. Than we, we did in, in previous years. So it's, it's allowed a more balanced lifestyle, definitely. Because um, I know like people have definitely been working this year alongside their studies. Um, it's given time to make YouTube videos. <laughs> um, it's been one of the most balanced um, years and the most enjoyable years as a result. And so what I say is worth it studying a BSc at Imperial anyways? I would definitely say so. 
um, a lot of students at the beginning of the year would say they would rather just go on to um, fifth year and just get on with clinical medicine. But um, nearing the end of the year, they really begin to change their mind and um, actually state that they're enjoying um, the BSc. It's definitely worth it. You gain a lot of great scientific skills that will be applicable um, to your life um, as a clinician because every clinician is a scientist so you must be equally equipped with the scientific skills needed yeah if you really want to make an impact in the field of medicine anyway also at imperial we are taught by world-leading experts in their field we get to work alongside them um, in projects that they are undertaking which transform the field so um, Many students get publications, many students are able to present their work at national conferences. Okay, so the day is over, so I'm just exiting the building now, gonna make my way back to my house. Um, it's not every day that I'm going straight home. In fact, most days I don't really go straight home, but that's uh, for a different video. So, thank you so much for watching. Stay tuned if you have any comments suggestions for videos put it down in the comments below make sure you like and you subscribe to my channel for more content coming your way follow my socials twitter instagram whatever it is and i'll do more like daily uh vlog type things um on those pages as well so follow them check that out